Hi, Terry Vanderheiden here. I'm going to show you how I set up this rose shot step by step and then also show you how I take it into Lightroom and Photoshop and finish it there. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up the rose so it's facing our broad light source. This is a Shamira softbox with an RE750 tungsten light illuminating this. I also have an RE300 light that's a spotlight that's going to bring a little bit of light to the back of the rose. I take a simple garden sprayer, do a little bit of spraying to spray some mist and get that kind of a texture of water droplets on top of the uh, petals, and then I go ahead and shoot it. Obviously, if we're shooting in tungsten, we want to make sure we have it nicely supported on a tripod and we use a cable release. And I always use mirror lockup when I'm doing a cable release. So the first shot uh, opens the, sh the sets up the mirror and the second shot fires the shutter. So it takes a little bit longer, but you make sure there's no vibration during your shoot. Let me go ahead and shoot this, and then we'll take it into Lightroom and show you what's next. So we've imported the images into Lightroom 4, and we have them up here in our um, library module. And we're going to find one here that we like, and we'll just click on this one. And uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to right-click and make a virtual copy. And the reason I make a virtual copy is so that we can kind of go back and forth and you can see what you've done to the original. Uh, with uh, original NEF files or any kind of raw file, you don't really have to worry about ruining it. But if you want to be able to go back and forth and see what your changes are, this is a little easier way to go. And you can tell that it's a virtual copy because it has this little, this little turned up page down here. So um, we're going to just work on the virtual copy. We're going to click on this and we're going to go up into the develop mode or the develop module. And the first thing we're going to do is do a little sharpening because just about every picture out of the camera needs a little bit of sharpening. So the first thing we're going to do is go to sharpening. So that's under the detail over here on the right. And one of the things you're going to notice on this screen is you're going to see the amount and radius and detail masking. These are the different things that come into play when you're doing sharpening. But the first thing you want to do is you'll probably notice this little yield sign here. And what we'll do with that yield sign is we will click on it. And what that does is it brings your image up to 100%. And that is a much better way to really judge sharpening. So it kind of reminds you to bring it up to 100% so that when you do your sharpening, you can see what that looks like. So we're going to bring this up to, uh, let's see, probably up to about 100. It's probably going to be hard for you to see on the computer screen. But it's a little bit sharper and it just has a little bit better look to it. So when you click right on the screen, it goes back to filling the screen up with your, with your image. Then we go back up to the top and we get into our basic uh, mode here. So the basic panel that we're going to work with, the very first thing we're going to do is one of the things in Lightroom 4 that's pretty cool is the new clarity slider. It's a, uh, um, it works quite a bit differently than in Lightroom 3. And what I'm going to do with this clarity slider is I'm going to do a little bit radical. Normally you'd move it up a little bit to kind of get some definition in, in contrast, in real tight contrast. Well, I'm going to slide this all the way up. You can see that it starts making this quite a bit richer in depth in terms of contrast. And I'm going to go ahead and just uh, move it to the side a little bit on the exposure and darken a little bit. And now I'm going to bring this into Photoshop and do a little bit of work on it in Photoshop. All right, so our image is in Photoshop, and now what we're going to do the very first thing I always do when I come into Photoshop. I have our image on our background layer. I always drag that down to make a copy because I don't want to work on the bottom layer. I want to have something that I can always go back to and compare what I'm doing. So right here is our background copy, and that's what we're actually going to do work on. So the first thing we're going to do is um, go over to the Dodge tool, which is over here. You can, under this panel, you can have dodge, burn, or, or the sponge tool, which is for desaturating or saturating. But for right now, all we're going to do is use the dodge tool. And we're going to come up here and make sure this is on highlights. I have it on 29%. You can do it for whatever you like, but I, I usually put it kind of high at, at, you know, 29 or 30%. And then I can um, always uh, fade it back by changing the opacity. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to paint. And I use the bracket keys to make this brush size a little bit larger if I want. And we're just going to paint in the dodge around the some of the petals. Kind of adds a glow to the petals and creates a kind of a little bit deeper contrast. So I like to go around all the edges here and um, 
make those stand out in terms of highlighting the edges of the petals. And this gives a lot more definition to the image as we're as we're building it. Okay, once I'm done doing that, if I like it, then I'm just going to save it, and we'll save it back into um, Lightroom. Now we're going to head back into Lightroom. Now we're back in here. Now you're going to see our first image, which was our original. This is our original image that we worked on, that we started with before we did anything at all. This is the image that we actually did the clarity slider on, and this is the image after we've done the clarity and brought in and did our dodging to bring out the petals a little bit more. I'm going to do one more thing on this image is I'm going to come back to the clarity slider over here on the right and move that clarity slider up and give even more contrast to this image. So then it's done. So all you have to do is um, uh, save it and you're good to go. So I'm going to save this and put it on my website. So if you want to go take a look at it, you can always check it out at uh, www.imagelight.com.